atmosphere packed at the PMAC. The opening tip is controlled by LSU into the hands of Anissa Morrow to last tear Poa. And now Haley Van Lift as LSU goes to work looking for Reese on the first possession. And she is fouled 10 seconds into the game. Kim Mulkey has her star player playing her best ball here in this month. Angel Reese averaging over five drawn fouls a game. That foul was on Emma King as Reese at the free throw line. It's LSU going here today. Amia Jenkins, the sophomore, has been playing well. And Asia Petty leading the team in scoring and in rebounding. And it's King the road. Well, in the last two games against Ole Miss and South Carolina, this is where Kentucky has struggled just to get into their offense versus the denying defense. Row to Petty. Petty defended by Reese. And a rebound for Morrow. Off to Van Lith, who will lead the charge for this LSU team as you take a look at a different-looking starting five because Michaela Williams is missing her first game of the season as Van Lith on the drive. And a blocking foul is going to be called on row for Kentucky. Michaela Williams has her right foot in a boot. We've been told it's precautionary, so she will not play here today. She'll be in cheerleading and, by the looks of it, analyst mode on that bench for her teammates. Outstanding freshman, so last year Poa getting the start. That's her eighth start of the season as Van Lith goes to the free throw line. I mentioned it at the very top, Christy Van Lith really playing some good basketball, really settling in here in February and March. What have you noticed with Haley? I think she's just playing now. I think she was thinking a lot the first part of this, especially SEC season. And for an athlete like Van Lith, you don't want to think. You want to play naturally, and that's what we've seen here in the, or we saw in the month of February. Here's Maddie Shear, the kick to the corner for King. And then Anissa Moore at the top of the defense gets the steal and the easy score. Timeout, Kentucky. League, but getting the start today with Michaela Williams out. Here's Miles out to Shear. And one thing, if I'm Kentucky, I want to start trying to use some pass fakes. And a take to the basket out of the timeout. They have got to be able to apply some ball pressure around the perimeter so that the ball just can't get fed inside to the bigs of LSU. Here's Petty on the inside. The kick out to Shear. Shear open look for three in and out. And Reese has the rebound. Transition defense will be really critical for Kentucky. Have struggled in the last two outings of getting five players solid defensively in transition. So far in this game, they've been pretty well, except you can't have those kind of fouls on the jump shooters. That foul on Anaya Russell at the PMAC to LSU. Van Lip at the line. One thing we know for sure, I'm sorry, I think this is exactly what you're going to say. We know LSU is going to get to the free throw. Yes. Line. Was it? Yes, part. Oh, about we're to say. sharing the brain. I love it. LSU, the top free throw shooting team in the country. That's a sign you're not sick of working with me yet, <laughs> that we're still thinking things through together here. Here's Reese. Miles back defensively. Good job by Brooklyn Miles. Leah Del Rosario into the game for LSU early. The 6'6 freshman from the Dominican Republic. Here's Russell, strong take, count it, and the foul. Kentucky who has to be ready to score here today. Just a little hesit a just little fake there and drives hard, draws the foul, and Del Rosario rotating over. Foul on Del Rosario. So Kentucky going a little bit of full court pressure off of the made free throw. And Kyra Elsie said, we've got to mix up our defense. We've got to try to keep them off balance. LSU found a little weak spot in that Kentucky defense. Morrow and Brooklyn Miles is fast on the push offensive foul. It's Kim Mulkey's happy with where this defense is right now. It is much improved over the last month. Well, it's been active. They've gotten out of passing lanes. They've denied passing lanes. Quick hands, active hands, which has allowed LSU to get out and run. They have not allowed 
Kentucky to get into any kind of half-court offensive flow. And it's been everyone, the bigs especially, have shot those gaps defensively. And you're seeing the improvement of LSU from January to February. The record speaks for itself. 7-0 in February. Their defense has improved so much, and it is primed for postseason play. Anissa Morrow locked in here in the opening minutes. That's a turnover. Kim Mulkey talked about it in the non-conference schedule. This team was not where it needed to be defensively. She knows what you need to do defensively to make a run in March and into April for a national championship. That's for certain. She's proven it time and time again, but I love what Angel Reese had to say to us yesterday when we were asking her about the defense. She said, Early part of the season, I was defending my player. Anissa was defending her player. The bigs weren't scoring, but the guards were. Now we understand team defense. We're active, we're covering for one another, and we've just been better. Well, we have a sellout crowd here at the PMAC today, and we've got a big LSU fan. <laughs> Shaq is in the building here today. Shaquille O'Neal, of course, LSU legend, but he is here to take part in the senior day ceremony which will happen at halftime and help escort and honor Angel Reese at the half. Angel talking about her relationship with Shaq and how he's become a father figure to her and they don't just they don't talk basketball very rarely it is about off court and it is about life. Oh Johnson with the steal the great dribble can she get the finish? Yes! Put that at the top of the highlight reel. Time out, Kentucky. We have been blessed in the SEC this season with highlight-worthy plays, and this one goes towards the top of the list in my book. Flashley Johnson with the handles in the open court, the pass fake, and the over-the-shoulder. I'm not even sure she saw the rim when she released <laughs> that one. She knew where the rim was. And this crowd loving it. Second timeout called here in the first quarter by Kentucky. Why she's got some veteran players on her team, they're all in new roles. And so she just tries to slow the game down for these young women. Right now for Kentucky, they've got to set up cuts. They've got to work harder than they have so far just to get open so they can try to get in some kind of half-court offense. You just get the sense, and you just talked about a few minutes ago, Christy, how locked in LSU is on defense right now. Thrown to the backcourt, and that's going to be a backcourt violation. If you're going to win in March, getting yourself to April, it's got to be defense. And she just loved that last possession because it was five players out, harassing ball handlers and denying passing lanes. Van Lift can't get the three, but Angel Reese is there to clean it up. Ten straight points for LSU. Penny inside fights in for two to end the run. Big rebound put back for Asia Petty. Reese denied. Petty's got it. Kentucky has numbers. Shear drives to the basket and is fouled. And here you see on the bench today, Michaela Williams. Development here for LSU, the outstanding freshman. Missing her first game this season. Her right foot is in a boot. Kim Mulkey told us yesterday it's a precautionary measure late in the season. Their next game isn't until Friday after today in the quarterfinal round of the SEC tournament. And then you've got a week after that before the NCAA tournament, so we'll see. But you see the boot out here for Williams. Thought they noticed something during the Georgia game and just out of caution, according to Kim, making sure they get ahead of it. I think Coach Monk is a little bit excited just to see how some of her other players would respond. She's obviously going to go a little bit deeper. One of those players out early is Janae Kent, the freshman who averages just seven minutes a game. Offense hasn't been a problem all season long. It's been the defense they've been trying to get up to speed, but if that defense can match what this offense has done this season, this is a team you can see playing in April. Well, in February alone, LSU held every opponent under 68 points. That was not happening in January, and I think the loss to Mississippi State really got these players' attention. They bought in, and they've been so much more connected on the defensive end. Petty going against three Tigers and draws 
a foul. If you weren't with us at the very top of the telecast, the former LSU Tiger now in her second year with Kentucky and having by far the best year of her collegiate career. She put in the time and got the reps in, in the weight room, on the floor, and has more than doubled her points and rebounded production from last year to this year. Angel Reese has her third rebound. Shot clock and game clock just about even, so Kentucky will settle in on defense as LSU settles for the final shot. And you see Kentucky going into a 2-3 matchup zone here. Miles out to make Van Lith work. There's Kent. Back out to Johnson. Morrow. Angel Reese on the drive with one on the shot clock. Van Lith had to get rid of it, and Kentucky gets a stop on defense. Back along the Mississippi River, the USS Kid docks next to the levee in downtown Baton Rouge. Good first quarter for LSU, 20 to 9. It is Kim Mulkey <laughs> bobblehead day. They were lined up how early? Two hours before? Before two earlier? hours, because we pulled up two hours early, and the line was already around the PMAC. Hey, two hands. Oh, no, no, no. Kim didn't want any part of it. She well, said no, no, they no, did no, it without no, me but. knowing, but this is the national championship outfit from now, last hang on. year. Is that what she's wearing today? No. No. That's but the ring is on there. Yeah, the, for there the fans is a championship ring on the uh, the ring finger of the left hand there. So the attention to detail. Here's Angel Reese. Oh, good block by Maddie Shear to start the second quarter for Kentucky. Shear kicks it over. Open three for Jenkins. Nope. Kentucky now 0 for 3 from outside the three point line. Janae Kent. Ooh, Angel Reese wants to try a three. She thought she had it. She's halfway down. There's Ken on the glass. No. Morrow fights inside. And we'll head to the free throw line. Here is Anissa Morrow, who, of course, piled up all sorts of points in her two years at DePaul. She's kept it going here at LSU. How prolific a score is she? She was presented with... <laughs> she had to go work for it, though. It's a rebound. A, a ball commemorating another rebound for Anissa Morrow, reaching the 2,000-point club. And you talk about someone who has come in and been an impact player who has kept things going from the big number she put up at DePaul here in the SEC. That's been a really impressive development for her and for LSU. And I think an area that we don't talk enough about with Anissa Morrow is her defense. We talk about her scoring. We talk about her rebounding. But her defense has so improved this season. Kim Mulkey's saying she's never coached an undersized post player with feet as quick as Anissa Morrow. Tyler rattles in the three. First mate three. Van Lith on the drive. Good adjustment, Haley Van Lith for two. Well, here's the bottom line. If you're defending Haley Van Lith, you want to run her off the three-point line, but you have to be ready to defend her going left. LSU had missed their last seven field goal attempts before Van Lith hit, and Maddie Shear doesn't waste any time on the other end to knock it down for two. Uh, speaking of not wasting any time, that's Angel Reese going by in a blur. Well, I asked Kyra Elsley last night regarding transition defense miscues in the last couple of games. She says, we're doing a good job stopping ball. We're doing a good job of getting all the way back to the rim. Not that time. But it's been getting five players connected in transition defense, and it broke down big time that last play. Miles ran into Morrow. A turnover. Here's Van Lith. Needs some help. Has it from Morrow. And now they'll reset with Poa. Morrow, oh, unselfish play. Made the pass. To Angel Reese for the two. Already double figures for Angel. She's got 10 to go with three rebounds. And now Poa looks ahead, and guess who? Angel Reese. And Kyra Elsey immediately is telling her team to slow down. She knows that right now all the momentum is going LSU's way. Going Angel Reese's way. She scored the last six. Well, I think a little chuckle by Shaq says it all there. <laughs> and rejected by Reese. Off to Morrow to Van Lith. Good job by Maddie Shear, but Van Lith fights it in for two more. Eight-nothing run for LSU. Angel Reese too good that close to the rim. Oh, yeah, and she's good that close to the other <laughs> rim as well defensively. 12 turnovers for Kentucky, 16 points off those miscues for LSU. Reese 
against Petty. No, Van Lith crashes the board, crashes a little too hard. I mean, Eric, look how far out Kentucky is trying to initiate their offense against this defense of LSU. And the further out you are means the further entry pass you're trying to make. But if you're Sonia Tyler, you don't need a pass. Congratulations to South Carolina, 16-0. They go back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons in the SEC. Tennessee held their own, so now Alabama has an opportunity. If Alabama wins today against Texas A&M, Alabama would be the four seed and Tennessee would be the five seed in Greenville. Alabama has a chance to do something they have not done since 1996, and that is get a four seed in the SEC tournament. Tyler launches and knocks down a three. Sophomore from Missouri leading the way for Kentucky with eight points. Well, Tyler's just been so good for Kentucky as of late, especially in the last three. There's Tyler inside of three minutes to go. Russell sees an opening. Finds Petty and Kentucky hanging tough. Asia Petty. Now need to be able to finish consistently. Van Lith denied by Miles and picked up in front of the Kentucky bench by Jenkins. Brooklyn Miles defense has been disruptive so far. It's been really frustrating to the point guards of LSU so far in this game. But you're also seeing from LSU, they're not up in the passing lanes to nine like we saw at the beginning of this game. And they're not afraid. It's a 10-2 run right now for Kentucky. They brought it down to nine. Van Lift kick to the corner. Wide open three. Johnson, no. LSU now 0 for 8 outside the three-point line. Petty aggressive with the block, playing with the two fouls. Big possession here for Kentucky. Sheer buries the three. And that shot gets Bob Starkey, defensive coach for LSU, off the bench. He is not happy at all with his play. Kicks it, but Janae Kent had cut to the basket. Turnover by LSU. Well, I held my breath when Asia Petty went up to block this shot because she's playing with the two fouls, but she had the defensive stand, which allowed Kentucky to get out, and then Maddie Shear knocks it down. Final seconds of the half. Kentucky got a shot off, but it was off the mark, and that will do it for the first half. A six-point game as Kentucky closes on a 13-2 run. I have a feeling we're going to see that first quarter defense here to start the third by LSU. Kentucky is 13th in the SEC in rebounding margin, minus four per game. LSU is a plus 14 in margin. Well, first possession of the quarter for Kentucky. Go ahead. Chris. I was going to say it helps when Asia Petty has 10 rebounds just by herself. Reese there defensively and last touch by LSU beat Kentucky basketball with eight to shoot. Rowe on the pull up. Rowe had sheer open three on the wing and missed her. Lajay Johnson to the baskets, and a blocking foul is called on Rowe. And Johnson will go to the free throw line. Good free throw shooter at 73%. Stretching the winning streak to seven for the Tigers, who are up to eight in the net ranking as we get closer and closer. Rowe sets for a three. That's off the mark, and Van Lift tracks down the rebound. Johnson works with Morrow. They got the switch, so they got the mismatch for Morrow, and they found her. Johnson with the assists had to hold their breath for a minute, but it finally dropped in for Morrow. Well, Kyra Elsie said, we're going to just keep trying to switch up how we defend the screen on the ball versus LSU. That time, LSU took advantage of the switch. Jenkins. Another wide open look. This time, Amia Jenkins knocks it down. Seven points now for Jenkins. That's right on her season average. There normally aren't a lot of bench points in an LSU game. They rely on that starting five. And as you saw, zero here today. There's their first two on the cut to the basket by Kent. Jenkins dribbling into trouble, picks up the foul. And then on the other end, she feels the double team come from the weak side. Kent does a great job with the backdoor cut. Foul on Johnson, her second. Oh, there's Jenkins, an open path for the basket for two more. 
Well, Jenkins can get to the rim. She's just struggled this season, scoring consistently once she gets there. Miss Q in transition defense, exploited by LSU. Morrow into double figures with 11 to go along with seven rebounds and four assists for LSU. Jenkins, this time denied by Reese. Angel's not afraid to put the ball on the floor across half court. I asked Kim Mulkey about that yesterday. I said, is this part of a strategic area? And she said, no, Angel just likes bringing it up. I'm yelling at her some of the time to get it to a guard. Johnson for two. Eight points now for Flauge, averaging better than 13 a game. Reese with it for LSU, now looking for a guard, finds Van Lith. I think Van Lith thought Angel was going to take it that time. Flauge, great adjustment, count it, and the foul. We have seen a couple of outstanding finishes at the basket by the sophomore from Savannah here this afternoon. Well, I'm not exactly sure what the message was from Kim Mulkey at halftime, but whatever it was, message received by Flaugé Johnson. Six points already here early in the third quarter. Her ability to hang in the air is just breathtaking at times when she can leave the floor, hang, adjust, and finish. And Johnson back to the free throw line, four for four today, trying to finish off the three-point play. Four and double figures for LSU. Reese leading the way with 12. Morrow with 11. Johnson with 11. And Van Lith with 10. Turnover, Kentucky. Here's Reese. Van Lith sprints up to join her. But Reese with the finish. Timeout call. We got a rebound. And I said, Jackson, who's the best coach in the SEC? My mom. Flauge with the steal out of the timeout and the finish with the left hand. So I think LSU is transforming into a team that feeds off their defense. We're seeing a very different team in the third quarter. Their defense has picked up, therefore their offense has been better. Tyler's been good into double figures now with 11. Rattles in that three-pointer. That ends an 11-0 run for LSU. Van Lift gets tackled by Miles. That went in, but that was called before the basket. Alabama would be the four seed. That's very important because, as we know, top four, double bye. You don't play until Friday in Greenville. Well, and Alabama would finish with the identical record to Tennessee, but because of head-to-head, -head, because they beat Tennessee earlier this month, they would get the four seed. Blanche behind the back. Van Lift with the finish. Reese gets in deep, had the mismatch, couldn't get it. Russell gets the rebound. Shear defended by Reese. Petty demanding the ball down low. Against Del Rosario, and she'll earn a trip to the free throw line. That's three on Del Rosario. I mentioned earlier, Flaugé has come out hot in the third, gets the steal, and is sizing up the defender. An amazing behind the back pass to Haley Van Lith on the weak side. Nothing Brooklyn Miles could do. <laughs> and Flaugé is nothing if not showtime for LSU. <laughs> so she has a showtime assist to go along with that showtime basket that she had in the first half. Petty off the mark at the free throw line. By the way, if you're wondering, Shaq's still here. Shaq's a big basketball fan, of course, LSU legend, but he was here at halftime to walk Angel Reese out onto the court and went back to his spot courtside to watch LSU here. How did he get your ring? That little dollar dollar <laughs> well, sign ring is Eric Freed's ring. I, I do lease it out on occasion <laughs> for a premium price. Oh, that's a premium price <laughs> ring, I guarantee well, you. Well, it's a, it's a ring for him, but it's a bracelet for me. Tipped up and in by Angel Reese. Tenth offensive rebound now for LSU, but what I like is LSU is trying to exploit. I mean, Kentucky runs a four-guard lineup, so what you're seeing LSU do now is go at that fourth guard and get Ooh. the ball inside. Petty with the flex after the basket.
That won't drop. Now one for five from the free throw line is Asia Petty. Closing in on three minutes to go in the third. And a player down back behind the play. It's Matty Shear. Shear right to the end of the bench. And we've talked about it before with Maddie battling concussions throughout her career. I mean, you see her go up for that oh, rebound and gets, yeah, it gets under. Yeah, she got hit before hitting the floor. Didn't it look that way? Yes. Blage Johnson inside for two. 15 points for Johnson. I mean, without Shear, they, Kentucky, that is, needs to go inside. Petty needs to get a touch every time down the floor. Russell, a little too strong, and Morrow with the rebound. Eight boards now for Anissa Morrow. Reese calling for it because her defender fell down. Well, Russell tried to draw the foul. So, Maddie Shear heading back up the ramp to the locker room for Kentucky. And lift, lofts it up, denied by Petty. Petty running the four back the other way, gets the pass, gets rewarded. Yeah, look at the matchup here today, You're going against Reese and Morrow, and there's Petty again reaching in with the denial. Tyler looks for Petty. Petty is looking for her shot, but was denied. Johnson, hot pass to Reese, and then a turnover. Shot clock inside of 10. Here's Miles working with Petty. Petty shows the touch from outside. Asia Petty with 13 points, nine coming in this quarter. Inside for two. Angel Reese at the end of the quarter to put LSU on top by 15. Composure that at times last year, I saw her get a little emotional. She has been a great leader for this ball club this year. On the drive, here comes Kentucky the other way, opening minute of the quarter. Reese not on the bench at the moment and not on the floor, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Oh, by the way, we did do our due diligence. We did ask Angel if she had anything she wanted to announce about <laughs> what her plans were after this year, and she kind of gave us a laugh and said, no, nothing to... Nothing to add at the moment. There's Petty keeping it alive. Shot clock now down to five. And there's two. And I had an LSU fan tap me on the shoulder. He said, I'm not going to share it, but is Angel coming back? And I'm like, sir, I think you know more than I do right wait, wait, wait. now. He said to you, I'm not going to tell anybody? Yeah. <laughs> there's a turnover. Taken away by Morrow. Has Kent behind her, but Morrow will do it herself. Russell, tough finish with the left hand for two more. Morrow couldn't get it. Del Rosario couldn't save it. Petty inside. Doesn't give up. Del Rosario's got the rebound. And Del Rosario running the floor there, trying to get ahead and get a rim run. Been a big game for the sophomore. 17 points. And Eric, 13 of those here in the second half. She has come out of that locker room inspired and playing at a different level. There's Petty again. Petty against Del Rosario and Johnson gets called. They had a ceremony before the game to honor two 2,000 point scores. We showed you the presentation to Anissa Morrow earlier, and then Angel Reese had her moment in front of a very loud, packed PMAC. And I kind of loved how Kim Mulkey delivered the 2,000 point balls. Made him earn it, look, made him get a rebound. Look, 
it, you could celebrate the 2,000 points, but they're known for their double doubles. So you're going to get that 2,000 point ball by getting a rebound exactly. and getting the putback, right? That's how many points did they get that way in their careers. Reese now with 20 and 10, by the way, today. It is her 20th double double this year and the 54th of her LSU career. Tyler pulls it back out. She'll try a three. How about that by Sanaya Tyler? And this is an important possession for Kentucky to try to get a stop. Angel Reese with the turnover. That's number 14 for LSU. Stay close here on the road. Russell hangs in the air, too strong. Morrow there defensively. Out of the scramble, Kentucky still with it, five and a half to go. Miles on the drive, fouled by Poa. You know, coaches in the SEC have to have their picks for player of the year. Freshman of the year, defensive player of the year, all conference teams in by, I think it's noon tomorrow. We talked about it before. Anissa Morrow is in the conversation for defensive player of the year. She may not get it, but you've been very impressed by what she's done defensively. Here's your picks, the final four. Choose from that list. Absolutely. I mean, what's impressed me about Morrow is her screen on the ball defense as a big to prevent guards from getting downhill. We've seen the shot blocking ability. She can defend down low as an undersized post or on the perimeter. But I don't get a vote, obviously. But that's a really <laughs> difficult because you got the rim protection of Camilla Cardozo. You've just got locked out defense by Jordan Cambridge. Finally, a three for LSU. They were 0 for 11. Van Lith knocks one down to put LSU on top by 14. Inside of five to go. Russell takes it at Morrow. And Morrow made her adjust her shot there. Ninth rebound for Anissa as she closes in, closes in on another double-double. Reese. Why not? They gave her the shot. She'll take the shot. Angel now at 22. Petty back on the floor has it, closing in on four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Russell, Morrow there on the switch. Short with the shot. But I got to look at who's made the bigger impact for their team, and that's where I give Angel Reese the nod. Camilla Cardozo's stats are incredible, but the reason I went with Angel is South Carolina won without her inside the numbers that make a difference in your eyes? I, I looked at points per possession because Angel Reese plays a lot more minutes than Camilla Cardozo. I looked at effective field goal percentage as well, as well as the true shooting percentage. That's a lot of coach speak, first and foremost, and I'll admit that. But it's just to get a deeper dive into the numbers. And the biggest advantage Angel Reese had was the rebounds. But I looked at what she has done the last month, especially to put LSU in contention. Because I'll be the first to say, in January, I wasn't sure that this was a Final Four team. The way they played throughout February, I would not be surprised to see them in Cleveland. It was interesting today on College Game Day, Rebecca Lobo, Carolyn Peck, Andrea Carter all had LSU in the Final Four. That gives you an indication of how they are trending up. And here's the thing, we saw them at Tennessee not shoot well, minus Haley Bentley, and they still get a win. And here's the bottom line, with the defense and the rebounding that they have, they've got a chance every night. Well, Jay Johnson's had some pretty baskets here today. She knocks down another one. What areas might hold them back? We've seen them have trouble shooting here today. They don't have much of a bench, especially with Michaela Williams out of the lineup. Those would be two things that jump right to mind. They've got the defense. There's another block. Still Kentucky ball. Well, and I said this all season long, the margin of error for LSU is very small. So we know they're really rotating as far as post players, just three. So they've got to avoid foul trouble. They've got to avoid injury. They need to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. And I, I'll say this, too. I think Sean that crammed into the building here today for Senior Day ceremonies. We'll have a video tribute after the game so the fans will hang around. Blauge inside for a couple more. So Kentucky will play next Wednesday in Greenville on the opening day of the SEC tournament. LSU's next game will be 6 o'clock Eastern time on Friday against the winner of the 10-7 matchup. Three-pointer knocked down by Jenkins. Let's 
Strong second half for the number nine team in the country, the number two team in the SEC. They outscored Kentucky 27-18 in the third quarter. They've outscored them 17-11 here in the fourth. And it's a senior day celebration at the PMAC. Reese and Van Lith contributing to a 77-56 win. Eight wins in a row for LSU as we head to the postseason. LSU, the number two seed in the tournament, heads to Greenville after a 77-56 win here in Baton Rouge. For Christy Thomas-Cuddy and our crew, I'm Eric Freed. So long from PMAC.